But guys, I'm here at Tobin Manor, and in one of their uh, sort of match lakes, you can see down here, they've got peg numbers everywhere. So nice, neat platforms. It's a sort of silverfish area, which is what they call um, silverfish, match, uh, you know, bream, tench, I guess roach, rudd. Yes, big carp in here. But where's fish? Do you know what I mean? It's very, very uniform. We've got lakes all around here, look. Lakes all the way around there, people fishing. Wind's coming up, I've got no umbrella. I'm going to give it a go. I've never fished this lake before, but what I've done, as soon as I got there, at anywhere new, the bait's the first thing to go in, and then I set up, it's working. I'm going to have a go with the float, but it's pretty warm, so I chuck a load of dog biscuits out, and always take a loaf of bread. And I'll put some bread out there as well. Out already, there's fish showing on the top. So fingers crossed I'm going to catch something. I guess they're carp, probably up to, I don't know, five, 10 pounds. I don't know what they're getting in here. A lot smaller average, but I see fish moving all over the place. Anyway, let's get the match rod set up. I've got my nappy changing mat there, that's down there. I've got some pellets here, look. I've got some soaked floaters. I've frozen those, they've been frozen about a year ago. I've got bread. I've got ground bait mixed up with, wait for this guys, you're going to love this one, with rice. So it looks like maggots, because being a match water, I figure they're used to seeing maggots. They might not be used to seeing these. Sultanas, raisins, that type of thing. So they can go in as loose field, try them on the hook. In here, I've got a load of dry dog biscuits down there. All peculiar sizes, purely because that's the one I could raid off the, uh, off the dog. And then when you soak them, they do get, as you can see there, hopefully, almost double the size. So I've no idea what it's going to take. I'm very, very confident, always have been fishing on the top. The wind's going to be a pain, but I can see fish moving. And what I've done, just so you know, it's going to be windy in the mic, guys. I've baited up that line of that tree over there. I use that as a line, I'm going to try float fishing, maybe link ledger in there as well. Let's get set up. It's a day where I want to catch anything at all, much like everybody else around this lake. It's like being on top of the world here. Look how high you are. You can see everything around the countryside. Great setting. Right, update on the fishing. Nothing on the float with a raisin, and I've got a link ledger down here, which I'll show you in a second. Just down there. On the reel and the buzzer. There's fish moving all over out there. I want to try and catch either a tench or a bream, so that's why I'm, I'm toughing out with baits on the bottom. But if I do want to catch them, I've just got a feeling if I go on the top, I'll probably have no trouble getting the fish off the top one, or maybe some bread or some biscuits. I can see the fish moving, I haven't got glasses on, polarising glasses. But just waiting to see if I can get any bites on that float first. I'll give it another... Oh, I suppose I'll give it... I'll give it another 15 minutes here on the float uh, with the raisins. And if I don't get a take of any description, because the breeze is picking up a bit, and I don't have an umbrella, I don't want to get wet, um, then I will go to pellet. I will try the standard 8 mil, Standard 8 mil pellets, which most people would use in a match. But I've got some 8mm trout pellets as well. Obviously more flavour with the trout pellets, but I guess barely anybody uses them, so the fish might not be used to them. You almost have to give them what they want. But they're certainly out there on the top moving. I don't think that's my problem. A couple of them are very, very light in colour. I don't know if they're ghosts or what they are. And there's the enemy over the back there, the ducks. If I chuck bread in, they're going to be having it, so I'm trying not to chuck too many biscuits in at once. The other method I could do, if I wanted to, I don't like these great big, they use these sort of, they control the floats like these great big clunky, chunky things. Most of my floater fishing is done free lining. But I snapped this one the other day, it's really annoying because it's a nice light one. It's called a midi something or other, but I guess I've glued it at the top of the superglue, hoping it'll hold up. I reckon that, with a piece of bread behind it, would actually get me the visual take of the float going under as well. See if we can't get something on the uh, on the standard method, but I think I'm going to have to band a pellet on there. And by holding this camera in my right hand, am I sure to get a bite? And I'm going to miss it or drop the camera. Nothing on the raisins down here. Just tighten it up a bit. Glorious! Oh, look at those bubbles! My God, alive! There's a lot of bubbles there. That's got to be a tench. I'd love to get a tench. Not bothered about the carp. They're ten a penny. I think I'm going to go in the car and get those pellets. That's pretty handy, guys. Look where the car is. 
just there. It's what I call a very, very sociable fishery. I'll just show you my float set up here. I've got, if you can see that, hopefully you can, a self-cocking float, which is all the weights there, locked either side with a small, just a small shot. They always give you a bit of leeway. So in other words, the float will go down to about here on self-cocking, and then if you put locking shot or anything extra, it just pulls it down a bit more. Then I've plumbed the depth by putting, let's take that uh, raisin off, no bites on that yet. Plumb the depth, so I've got the depth. That really is the depth, I want that on the bottom here, I want that holding on the bottom. So this is actually on the bottom and it goes up to my float from there. It actually looks like that, if you can see that. But what I'm going to do here is, guys, I'm going to put this banded pellet on. So these are the pellets. Right, these are just regular, regular pellets that everybody uses. You can get them in the tackle shop. And get some of these, which are bands. That's what they call them. It's like this. Hopefully you're seeing this. Oh, first bite on raisin. That goes on like this. Oh, you're going to see this. I might have to do it on a big camera. You see how we go. The problem is, I've got a different angle. I, I go over there, and you can see that. I stretched it. Hopefully you can see I stretched it. I put the pellet inside. I release it, pull it off. I can just roll it. There is, in fact, a band around that. So now I can put my hook through that band. Don't want to break it. And it hangs like that. Hopefully you can see that, people. Pretty sure you can. And that's where I'm going to give it a go. That's what a lot of matchmen do. Now you can fish these on the bottom, or a lot of guys fish them shallow on the top. I might go sort of pellet waggler in it. I might try the float and just keep blipping because I've noticed every time I chuck some. Uh, some floaters out, some bits of bread, other than the ducks, the carp do come up. I don't really want the carp, I want a tench or bream. So I'm trying to tough it out. And we'll look at those bubbles over there. So let's cast that into the shadow line. You've overcast, look at the bubbles that God alive that's come up there. There is a heap of bubbles. Cast that pellet in there, got the rod down. This one I'm gonna change to probably banded pellet as well, I think. They just don't know what brazens are. They don't know what they're missing, is the truth of it. Oh, look at that carp there, man. Look at him. Look at that carp, boy. Right, that's on the money. It's not like maggot fishing. Oh, big mistake, guys. Hot day, bread in a plastic bag, sweating. So they're going to... Oh, it's dried out already on the top. Keep your bread in the shade out the way. Scanning, scanning, looking for the ducks, what ducks are there. They see everything, those creatures. Break all my bread up. And out you go. I bet they see that for miles. You know, the other thing I think would work here is because I've got the ground bait in, is make a paste out some ground bait and actually put a piece of paste on the bait. I've all, I, I do pretty well at that at other lakes I've fished. I mean, this is all new to me, this one. Possibly should have had maggots and cast as usual stuff, but I've come sort of half cocked here. Um, got sweet corn. I don't really fancy the sweet corn yet. Here come the carp on the top, boys. Here they come, right past my float, looking for that floating bread and nudging it around. They obviously fish for a bit. A lot of carp there. Hopefully, a tench beats them to it. That bobbing once changing. Oh, another fish on guys. I had some uh, carp, a small carp and I've got one now. I still can't get that tench. This feels a bit, ah, it's breamy. That one's a bream. A matchman love them. I don't mind catching them. Fish is a fish isn't that, at the end of the day. Oh, beep on that one as well. There we go, just an average small bream. Good to catch on the float, on the waggler. But what else is in that swim? I ask myself. And the hook fell out again. Let's put him back as he is. Away he goes. I feel I'm starting to get fish with this rice ground bait now. 
there's so many bubbles over there, I can't tell you. I'm going to have to get the big camera in a minute and see if I can't. That's a good shot, that's a good one. That's a money shot, that one. That's a money shot. These are these funny little things. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, who knows? They have some weird ass names, don't they? They're tiny. One of those, four mil. Keeps beeping away. Have I got my own line? Bream slime on the line. That's on that last fish. I thought it might be tench, because you can get tench slime as well. Yuck. I'd like to get it off. I'm not sure they, uh, they like it, the other fish. If you wipe your hands with tench slime, I think you'll find it's quite bitter. I wouldn't suggest putting it on your sandwiches. So I'm persevering with the waggler float and casting it all over the place at the moment. Not, oh god, I had a bite on the drop there. No, you guys wouldn't have seen it. You guys wouldn't have seen it. I'm going to come in a tad. As you move it, you end up altering the tension of the line to the float. I've got it resting on a rod ring and my back rests there. This has still got the sultana on it. I don't know what to do with it to change. I've had one beep in an hour, which I am getting bites on the float now. Hmm, what to do, what to do? Oh, another beep on the raisin. I'm not sure I shouldn't put half a raisin or maybe band a pellet on there. Yes, there's my pellet loader. Already got the band on there. there stretch it like this, stretch it pop it over, put a little loading tool off I'm going to call it, and just nick your hook through the band, making sure it's in the middle. I'm going to lob that out there. Let's move this float out of the way, it's drifted as you. The only thing with fishing two at once, it's better either fish two ledgers or two, guys some bubbles man, I like some bubbles out there. Get out there. That is on the money, that's a money shot. I can't really bump it to pull it, to make it sink or take a gamble there. Bobbing. These are the spines of notebooks cut up, they're expanding. Put them around the line and wait. Back to my yum yum pellet and weed. Getting the bream pretty regularly now. No size to them, but nevertheless, good to catch on uh, on a match rod. Yeah, might be a swinger. No, nah, don't do it, Graham. Don't do it. That's because I'm not a matchman, you see. Matchman would no way swing a fish like that. That could be a match winning fish. There we go. For me, it's just another fish, but for a matchman, I can well see that would be Look at the slime on there, oh my god, can you see that guys? Oh, yuckarini. Oh, <gasps> two. No, don't do that, Graham Children, watch. <gasps> Stop it, Graham. Stop it. <gasps> oh, mummy. <sighs> Very childish. Luckily. Well, these little four mil pellets seem to be soft ones they are guys, they're soft, they're not, uh, you just buy them in a packet, uh, just like this. Just like that, it was squishy, I've had them years, probably about two years old. Oh Jesus, what have I done? Here comes the breeze, let's get out there first. That's on the money, sink it, a load of bubbles out there guys, it's got to be the bream I would guess. Oh, fish on, I <laughs> just saw the, oh yeah, and off. Now that was interesting because that was nothing, 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 and then I changed to I changed to that banded hard eight mil pellet, which is still on there. That's interesting. It can go back out there again. Money saved is money earned. My granddad used to say. Now this time I can sink it, bring it in, get it down. I feel I'm going to get a scream on here before the afternoon is out. A self-hooking screamer. I might even put that on back one just for safety. Because there's some seven, eight, nine pound fish I've seen cruising up down the bottom here. 
Come on, fish. I do like float fishing. You just need enough bites to make you hold the rod. I put a piece of slow sinking bread flake on. A little pinch of it, thinking that might uh, get a tench. And I think I've nailed a bigger carp. It's digging and digging and digging. So I'm going to try this. If I get this fish in, show you. I'll try it a couple of uh, couple of times again. But if it is bream, if it is a carp all the way, then I'll probably go back to those small pellets. Now this is a, this is a carp. Anyway, listen, fish is a fish on a tough day. It's going well at the moment. Bending the rod, guys. That's what we're here for. Bending the rod. Waggle on the float. Oh yeah, a waggle on the waggle. I love it. He's digging. That feels like a foul look fish. That definitely does not feel right. The rod is maxed out there. And he's doing the most peculiar, peculiar fight. I've got this one down as being foul hooked. Those swells make it seem like it might be a tench. This definitely does not feel right. I didn't think it did. Had that sort of thrashing feel to it. Very hard. I've got to tell first. He was obviously digging around the bait. A backwards carp. There we go. Bigger fish. Where's he nicked? Right in the tail. He's out. And there is. I don't know. A very, very humpback one. Is it? He looks like a giant crucian, but it's got to be one of those F1s. Fast growing, short, dumpy things that the big carp fishermen don't like because they tweak baits all the time. Back you go, bud. So what I was doing, I'm on this hook it is, I'll tell you what it is, a barbarous wide gate carp, hooked to nylon, 16 to four pounds. So a small hook to a decent, decent sized piece of uh, mono. Just getting a pinch of flake like this squeezing it quite hard around the hook that shot slid down there should be way back up there don't bite so hard these shot let me bite this on for you guys don't bite so hard that you weaken the line kids especially let's try that i'm going to try this a couple of times but if i just keep getting carp i'm going to have to change change baits put the biscuits out on the top and they just seem to mill around I'm pretty sure that they they hear the sl slurping noise of the uh, the other carp loads of bubbles out there there we go boom 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 bream on bread that's what I was after no sign of the elusive tench. Plenty of always skimmers, I would say. Yep. Welcome home, Mr. Slimy. And he certainly is. Listen, it's all action, guys. I'll stick with the bread for a while. So, good hard pinch because it goes soft. I can't afford to move it once it's been in position with bread. You can't really afford to sink the line too much as you'll pull it off the hook. So I find bread is best fished on fairly wingless days. You guys won't see the float out there. It is there with bubbles around it. Oh, I just want to ease it into those bubbles slowly. Very slowly. Here we go. Oh, didn't even go on the uh, buzzer that time. That's on the uh, eight mil pellet banded. Feels like a bream. Oh my eyes are tense. Oh yes. Oh, missed that one as well. Let's get the tench. There he is. Look, 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 not a big fish. We know they're not big fish. It's just fun, isn't it? Look. Tench carp and bream. There you go. 
on the banded pellet. I do like catching tench. Obviously I like catching bigger tench, but I'm not some specimen hunter that's got to have the 30s. Lovely fish to catch. And that's on the pellets, so that's throwing a span in the works. That's those yum yum pellets. Bread, the latest success, and eight mil pellets. Back you go. I've got to film those bubbles for you and I keep getting sidetracked. I keep getting bites. It probably takes about five, six, seven seconds for that uh, bread to sink. Even though it's got like a number eight shot, six inches from the hook. It probably has carp moving on the surface out there. I will be going for them later on, but not at the moment. Probably in the last hour, I'll see if I can't uh, pick a bigger fish off the top for you. I need to be about a foot farther back on the bubbles. Oh, here we go, guys. This is what you've been waiting for. Totally awesome cock up. Two fish on at once. Here you go. This is Graham for them. <laughs> one on the float, one on the ledger. What do you reckon? Which one's coming in first? One on the right, the one on the left? Smith, are you watching? Are you watching now this is done? One on, on the right could be a tension on the ledger. One on the left could be a bream. One on the left is a small F1 carp. One on the right is... A lovely tench, I'm sorry, Mr. Carp. You get binned. Tinker, tinker gets the net. There we go. There he is. In you come. Good session. Male tench. I'll show you why in a minute. If you look there. Petrol fin. Scooped. Ventral fin, very scooped. See it? Like a big teaspoon scoop. Slightly scooped on the vent fin. He's eating that down. I've got the hook out. This mug even got my rubber band back. A nice little tench. 8mm hard pellet, banded, ledgered, link ledgered. Oh yeah, forgot about this other one. Hang on a minute. Sorry, sorry. stop it, mate. I got, I got distracted with that tench. I'm terribly sorry. Less important species for me. And that is... Charlie Carp. I wonder what the F in F1 stands for. <laughs> Don't even go there. I've got another F Carp. Now they're on the feed now. There he goes, getting back. Guys, I've got problems with the other camera, so I've gone over to the head cam. The other one's doing a recovering data exercise. And it, although this might, it's got to be fouled. It's quite a nice sized fish. I've been taking my time and I'm hoping something's going to come out on this camera. I'm hoping the fish is going to stay on, to be honest. And wait for this, I drop my ledger rod just down the margins and out the way while I fight this fish. And it took off. Missed the fish. I just cannot do anything with this. I'll get them so close and then I just, it just locks a blank up. I mean, that's the downside of match rods. Size 16 hooks, small hook links, etc. I haven't really seen a fish properly yet. He's just unbelievably digging. I should think it's every chance he's going to come off. Digging and digging and digging. I don't get any more pressure on him. Where did Rod will go? I know he's hooked in the tail by the fight. Come on, fish. I don't want to keep him too short. Nearly, nearly. Got him. Oh yeah, nice fish. Even if he was hooked in the tail. I'm glad I did uh, switch cameras. Look at that. Just nicked, just in that bottom. Bottom of the, of the tail where he's been digging around. There we go. Put him on the mat and I'll show you. It's a mirror carp, not like the other commons. Quite a nice fish that one. Be pleased to catch that on a regular carp rod. Well, let's get him back. Let's see what else we can catch. I might try those. Uh, Small soft pellets again. They 
one thing in my mind guys and, and that is absolutely definitely definitely working boiled rice they are bubbling like you wouldn't believe out there they love it and I love it too because I've been getting fish after fish the red seems to be the way forward although my float keeps sliding a bit of bubbles out there peeps Ooh, I can't wait to get my float in there pinch it on get it lined up they're not moving on the top so much now so I guess they've gone down deep over my baited patch Quite tight that drag. That's better. I'm going to put this. Uh, what was that? I'm going to put this banded eight mil pellet back out there again because you just never know. I'm going to give it about another 30 minutes, and I've had such a good day. Really, I don't mind trying to get one off the top for you, but I mean, God Almighty, good enough fish on the float. I don't think I'm going to improve on that on the top. Hopefully you saw that last take as the float went under. I was filming the float when it went. Who'd have thought years ago we'd been putting elastic bands around pellets catching fish on the who'd have thought that 40 50 years ago. Now it's the norm, isn't it? It's just the norm. Everybody does it. Easy way out. No standard stuff. Worms, snails, caddis flies, and all the stuff we used years ago. That one's got bloody carp written all over it, that one. Bobbing on. That won't take long to go, I don't feel. Squash me bobbing, but still. Whatever. Big camera at the ready. I'm going to check a handful of biscuits out there in case. In case they come. Oh, guys, I'm alive. You must have seen I just threw that out. A whip strike. And I'm guessing a small F1. I don't think it's a bream this time. Oh, no, he's got the other line. No, it's another tench. Just a little tench. There he is, lovely little fish. Just nicked in the top lip there. Wow, good session on the float. Well, I'm going to have a couple more goes, maybe five, ten minutes. It is, uh, I mean, I could stay all evening and do this, but I want to try later on the uh, bigger carp late. Oh, I missed that one. I was looking at this guy over here. I've gone back to the um, small pellets again. New hook link. They're very good, these little pellets, I have to say. They might be a little bit softer, don't I don't know. They're not cheap to buy, that's for sure. I've got to get out of those bubbles. That is spot on cast. Sink the lies. Oh, that's a nice carp there. That looks like a pretty good fish. That's those biscuits I chucked out last time. Sometimes you get two fish, two carp together, one behind the other, it makes you look like one big fish. There's a bite on the float. That needs shortening a bit. Oh, that's a bite on the float again. They're definitely digging around there now. Absolutely dig. Look at the bubbles at the back there. Might put the big... Uh, Big camera's cleared itself on the data recovery now, so. So listen, everybody's got different ways of hooking bread. If you have sliced bread, uncut bread is the best. Don't just break it off. I find it's easy to take about a quarter of an inch off. Keep the bread, because you might want that for float fishing. Snip off any raggedy bits. Don't waste it, throw it in the water. And about half an inch, like this. 
snip you get three baits out of one there you just get a neater you know area to hook with and then all I do is this I go if you're gonna see this I go in through the white first I roll it I try not to break that crust roll it around okay like that push the shank up and then just tap that point in then I bend it backwards a bit like this and put a little pinch can you see that there I'm balance let me just balance it on the tip of my finger so I put a little pinch of doughy bread over the eye of the hook so you get one dip of that softens it up and then if the cart takes it and he should he won't see the hook okay, just close in here you can see the crust I zoom in It's my piece of crust which I would normally do free lining, but if you want the addition of the float, there's the float. So that gives me two indications. I can see it visually, the bread disappear, and then if I miss seeing that, watch for that float to dip. About 18 inches to two feet away is what you want it. Here we go, guys. Nice cut to finish off with. Floaters off the top, got me that bonus fish, and you'll probably get these all day long if you went to this method. Thanks for watching, totally awesome fishing show. Don't forget to watch Mike's one, the outdoor show as well.